don't worry i got you this video is all about how to make waterproof scratch resistant product labels and i'm going to show you guys how to make clear ones and white background ones and this video is pretty long but i divided it up into separate parts that way you can easily navigate through the video to get to the section that you need to get to so check out the chapters below in case you don't know how, we're going to start off with part one, how to custom size the label for your jar or bottle, whatever container you're putting your product in. I like to use pickmonkey.com for this. It costs $7.99 a month. A lot of people are using canva.com. I'll link to both of these down below, and I believe that both of them have a free trial in case you don't want to pay. You can just use the free trial real quick, but you'll probably eventually need to sign up if you're making a business and going to be regularly making labels. So go to create new and click blank canvas. And you're just going to keep scrolling down. And I am going to go pretty slow. So you can speed up the video down in the corner on the settings to make the video faster if you want. Anyways, go to print sizes and you need to find eight and a half by 11. The reason why is because this is the size of regular printer paper. So printer paper you're putting in your printer is the same size as this. So we can essentially use this as a guide to how big we want to make our label. So you can grab your empty jar or bottle you're gonna be putting your product in and grab printer paper. And you can kind of imagine how big the label needs to be. So look on your left hand side, go three columns down to graphics and you wanna click on basic. And I like to use the rectangle. You can use whatever shape you want your label to be. You can get fun with it, do a triangle, an octagon, whatever you want. And here is where you're gonna be imagining how big you need it to be. And I promise this gets really easy the more you do it. I can basically get it within the first try or a second try just because I've done it so many times. Go back over to the left-hand side and you want to go down to shadows and outline. And go ahead and click outline and then you want to change the orange to the black or you don't have to if you want but i just like to be black and my printer only prints in black and white and then i just click knock out so now we actually have a black border so we know how, like where to cut around if we're cutting by hand so go ahead and save this to your computer and you want to save it as a jpg and i just saved it as test and go ahead and print it out now for this you're gonna want to use a laser jet printer not an inkjet printer. If you use an inkjet printer, your labels will smear because it's ink. But laser printers use some kind of like laser, I don't know what they use, honestly. I have, I have no idea, but it doesn't bleed. So go ahead and cut that out. And um, yeah, it looks like it fits, but it's just like a little bit too big. So now I know I need to cut off just a little bit of the label on the bottom. But I will link down below to the printer that I use. It's really cheap. And it's not the best quality, but I've been using it for years and it's gotten me this far. So I guess it was a good $100 investment, I guess. But it, trust me, if it causes you a headache, I warned you. Yeah, you just want to make sure it's a laser printer. I went back to pickmonkey.com and I just adjusted it a little bit, took off a little bit of the bottom, went ahead, saved it as a JPG again, and uh, now I'm printing it out. And there we go. Now we know exactly how big we want our label to be. And we have a guide so we can cut it out by hand. Now it's time to actually design our label. I'm not going to be giving you guys the FDA regulations for cosmetic labels. You'll have to look that up yourself. I'll link to the FDA website down below. But what you want to do is go down to edits and you actually want to crop it. We're going to click crop canvas and we're just cropping out everything. That way we can work with just the actual label we're going to be designing. And there we go. And if you need to adjust it, just go ahead go to edits crop canvas again and just crop it out again to make it perfect then go ahead and just delete that there we go but now we have our label and we can get designing have fun with this do whatever you want do make sure actually don't do what you want because you need to make sure you follow the fda regulations which i'll link in the description box so you guys can read all about that so go back to the left part of the screen click on the t for text click add text and here is where you can scroll through all the different texts on PicMonkey. You can also upload your own text as well. Keep in mind, this isn't a tutorial on how to use PicMonkey, but um, yeah, you can kind of like, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing on the screen. I don't know how to explain it, but you can adjust the texts, you know, resize the corners. I hope you can see what I'm doing on screen. Just clicking on the different texts to change your text. Click on it to type your text. 
pretty straightforward if you've ever used any type of editing software or if you go to the bottom, I do think this feature is pretty important. Click on alignments and you can do align and snap, which helps center your text or show a grid on canvas to sort of, you know, help alignment issues and stuff. So that is really helpful. And I did want to point that out. I'm also going to point out a couple other things. You can go to text spacing to adjust the text spacing. This is like a must have for me. I'm very picky on letter spacing. And then another thing you can do is go to curve text and you can make your text circle or you can do an arch and you can change the curvation or you can go to shadows and outline. You can have a drop shadow and adjust that. You can have an outline, adjust that, change the colorings of that, change the thickness. You can basically do like really anything to your text here on PicMonkey. Just have fun getting like comfortable with the software and really explore everything you can do before designing your final label. And then, yeah, this is the final label and I'm just gonna save this to my computer. All right, this is for those of you who want to cut your labels by hand. Definitely get a good pair of scissors or something. I don't have a good pair. So we're back on PicMonkey. Go to file, click on create new, go to computer, and you're gonna upload that test two that we did earlier of the shape that worked out for your label. And this is going to work as your uh, outline, for lack of a better word, for your uh, label. So go to add image, upload that label we just created, and we're going to put that inside of the uh, the hollow rectangle. <laughs> put the label in there, and now you have like this magical border that you can cut around if you're cutting by hand. You do not need to do this if you are going to use a Cricut. You can just skip this section. Uh, you're going to repeat this, obviously, if you want more labels. But if you just want one label, then yeah, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and save this and then print it out. And you're obviously going to want to print it out on your paper of choice. So this paper that I'm holding up here is clear sticker paper. I will link down below to it. This paper here is white vinyl waterproof sticker paper. I will link to this below as well. I will link to all the equipment I'm using in this video in the description box. And I also have an Amazon storefront where I link to all my label making stuff on there as well. So I'm going to be using the clear sticker paper. And you do want to be careful because this stuff loves to get jammed in the printer. All label paper I use gets jammed in the printer. There's no way around it. And then you're just going to want to cut it out. And the good thing about the clear labels is that your cut doesn't need to be perfect because mine's definitely not perfect because the label's clear and you can't tell. So if you are hand cutting your labels, I do recommend clear labels for that reason. That way you don't have to worry about it being perfect. And there you go. Now you got your clear labels cut by hand, but guess what? These are waterproof, but they're not scratch proof and neither are the ones with the white background. So if you choose to use the white waterproof vinyl paper, those are waterproof too, but they're not scratch proof. So I'm going to show you guys how to make them scratch proof. I'm just printing off the same exact thing I just printed, but we're going to put a laminating sheet over it. So obviously you're going to have more labels on here and you wouldn't be wasting this entire laminating sheet, which again, I will link down below. It's on Amazon and these are bigger than regular printer paper. So don't be alarmed by that. So I actually just cleaned up my paper real quick by cutting off the end of it. Um, but if you want to cut up the laminating sheet to make it smaller, to make things like, I don't know, easier to work with, you can totally do that as well. I do this every single time I use it and go ahead and pull off that top part. And I like to do this first cause it just gets me, um, I don't know, it's a lot easier to align it on there first and then dust off the whole label paper make sure there's no dust or debris. That's really, really important. And then go ahead and just peel it back a little bit and then just quickly pull it on like that in this motion. And I learned this method from this channel here. I'll link down below to her video. It's actually the only video on her channel, but it was so helpful, so thank you. And then I just use this little cricket squeegee thing to get out any air bubbles. And really, I don't really deal with air bubbles very often. Doesn't happen too often. And you can probably actually poke it with a needle, maybe pop the air bubble. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had to do that, but it might work. But there we go, now it is scratch proof and it's waterproof it is annoying having to do this every time labels are really time consuming but you know that's just what you got to do 
if you want some good high quality labels unless you want to pay for someone else to make them but those normally come in really large batches and can cost a lot but you can do the same method with the white vinyl waterproof paper as well you'll just have a white background instead and if you want to use this paper alone without laminating it that's totally fine but it will scratch the ink won't smear it'll just scratch but if you don't want it to scratch then add a laminating sheet all right, moving on to part four, how to cut labels with the Cricut Explore Air 2. We're gonna start off with revisiting our pattern and writing down what the length and the width is of our label. So if you are starting out making labels using a Cricut, you can actually skip part one of this video because if you open up the Cricut design space and you go to new project, you will actually see there is a roller on the top and the left-hand side of this. So you wouldn't have had to do part one to figure out how big to make your label because PicMonkey doesn't have a ruler, but here on Cricut, it does. So you can just put your label in here and adjust it to the custom size you want, knowing exactly what the inch is, unlike PicMonkey, since there's no ruler on PicMonkey. Now moving on, we are going to the left side of the canvas and clicking on shapes, and I'm going to select the square. Go up to the top and unlock the little lock adjust the width to 6.75 and the height to 9.25. Now you have this gray rectangle here and you need to make sure you keep all your labels within this because uh, the gray rectangle represents this black border and the Cricut can only cut what's within the black border. So that is the point of the gray rectangle. Now go down and click on upload and then upload image and then browse and click on the label you want to upload and click on complex, then click continue. Here, you don't wanna do anything. Just click apply and continue. And then you wanna click print then cut image. So click on the one on the right. And then if you wanna add uh, any tags or name your image or add it to any collections, this is where you'll do that here. And then go ahead and just click upload. And now your image will be uploaded to the kind of like your upload section. So then you need to click on the image and then click add to canvas. And here is where you can adjust the size, move it around. You wanna make sure the lock is unlocked so you can adjust each size. If it's locked, it'll uh, make both sides equal. So you wanna make sure it's unlocked so you can adjust each side individually. And yeah, I just adjusted it to the length and width of my label. And you can also kind of use the ruler on the Cricut to make sure it's right. And there you go. Just add it within the gray rectangle and then you just want to duplicate it, add another label, duplicate it, add another label, and then just keep doing this until the whole gray rectangle is filled up. You can also move the rectangle out of the way and highlight all of them at once and then click command C to copy and command V to paste and it makes the process so much easier. And then you can do that again with this section, command C, command V. And now we have all the labels within the gray rectangle. So go ahead and delete the gray rectangle. You don't need it. We are just kind of using it as like a little outline. Go ahead and select all of the labels and make sure they're all selected and then click attach. And now they are all attached. This is really important. If you pick them up, you want them all to move together. That's how you know they're attached. Before we print out, make sure you remember to save. I have forgotten to save a project before, so make sure you save it, title it, put it in a little category if you want, and then go ahead and click on make it in the top right hand corner. And here's a black border. This way you can check to make sure everything's within the border. And then we can click on continue. Go ahead and click on send a printer and print, but I'm actually not gonna print this. I'm actually gonna go back home. I'm gonna go to my stuff and I'm gonna print off labels I actually need instead of a bunch of the same label I don't need. So I'm just gonna open up my rosy facial cleanser label sheet and we're going to print that instead. And I actually like to click use system dialogue. I don't know what this does, but uh, for some reason I feel like it makes my labels come out better quality sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. And for some reason the printer screen pops up behind Cricut. So make sure you hide the menu and go behind the Cricut uh, design space and click print that way. And you need to babysit the paper because like I said, label paper likes to get jammed. So you kind of have to like push it through as it goes through. It doesn't always jam. It likes to surprise you. You just never know what's gonna do. So go ahead and grab your Cricut mat. Mine is gross and old. Don't worry, I got some new ones in the mail. This just happens over time. It just gets gross, that's fine. 
So just align your label uh, sheet on there. I like to work from this angle. I don't know why I can just get it straight better. So work around your mat and see what angle works better for you because it can be pretty hard for some people to get this on there straight, but I promise the more you do it, it just gets so easy. And you just wanna make sure everything's flat. I like to use this roller sometimes. Most of the times I just actually use my arm and sometimes it makes my arm black. That just happens. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our laminating sheets. And again, we have to cut it. We have to make sure it's cut to be inside the black border. Because if we put this over the black border, the Cricut for some reason doesn't detect the black lines and it doesn't cut. So make sure you put a little notch on the top and the bottom so you know where you need to cut. And I just use this really cheap cutting thing. I don't even know what this is called. I'll link to it down below. And you always wanna make sure you save this top part because this top part is key to making sure you get it on straight. And then I like to just place it on there before I stick it on to make sure I cut it straight. Sometimes you mess up. Like literally none of the laminating sheet can be on the black lines at all or else the Cricut won't detect it. So tear off that top part and use this time to align it on there as straight as possible. Again, just set the laminating sheet on and make sure everything's not on the black lines. You can cut it if you need to. Make sure there's no dust or debris on the label. You do not want to waste your labels because these take so long to make. And then go ahead and start peeling it off and just pull it. And it is that easy. There you go. Now your label is scratch resistant. And then just squeegee it, make sure all the air bubbles are out and you're good to go. You'll know your Cricut's ready for the mat when this little arrow pointing up and down is flashing and go ahead and just slide the Cricut mat in there. And you wanna make sure it's under both of these notches. If it's not, the Cricut will get jammed. And you wanna make sure it is turned to cardstock plus. That is the dot in between bonded fabric and cardstock. And then just press that button that is flashing with the arrow pointing up and down again. And then go ahead and click the flashing Cricut symbol. And there you go, it'll just start cutting. And I'm telling you, if you're making a lot of labels, investing in a Cricut is so worth it and peeling off that label is so satisfying. What's not satisfying is taking off the label sheet. You do need to like fold your mat to pull it off. It makes it so much easier. And it, the Cricut does kind of cut all the way through a little bit on some of them. I'm gonna be honest, I can never get the cut strength to be perfect. It's like it doesn't cut enough or it's too much. I don't know how these awesome sticker shop people do it but whatever, it's good enough for me. There we go, waterproof, scratch resistant labels for your products, you're welcome. And of course, these labels are much more detailed than the ones I designed earlier. I got a back, I got a front, I got my brand name, the amount. You wanna make sure you're following the FDA guidelines if you are selling cosmetics. Also, just a little tip, this is how I store my labels. I use a binder with these clear uh, sleeves and I slip my label sheets in there. It's a really, really easy way to organize your labels. You don't have labels everywhere and it's super easy to find the ones you need. Also, by the way, I just wanted to mention you can do this same method in the laminating sheet with clear label paper, the clear label paper we used earlier. But the downfall is that for some reason, half of the sheet ends up with this weird shadow. The top part is always fine, but the bottom has shadows so then you only can use the top half of your clear label paper. And it's so wasteful because this clear label paper is more expensive than the white vinyl waterproof paper. But the shadowing actually happens on the white vinyl paper sometimes as well. I notice when there are larger labels, the shadow happens more often as opposed to smaller labels, the shadow doesn't happen at all. This is definitely an issue on Cricut's end. I don't know what the problem is because when I print these sheets not on Cricut, I don't have the shadow. That's how I know it's not my uh, printer's issue. I also went out and bought a really expensive printer and it's still printed with a shadow. But yeah, the method is the same way. The only difference is I do use these little tweezer tools from Cricut to peel off the clear labels because sometimes the oil from your hand can leave like an imprinting on the back of the clear labels. And that's another reason I don't really like clear labels is sometimes it's really hard to just get like a clean label look with them. But you know what? Do whatever you like. I hope this video was helpful. I will link down below to any other videos I've done in the past about making labels. 
Leave your questions down in the comments. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and go binge watch all my other videos and go follow me on Instagram at Tara Lee Skincare. I'll talk to you guys later.